This is the Diels Alder reaction, which is a which is a very famous reaction in organic chemistry because of its usefulness in organic synthesis. It became so useful that Diels and Alder were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discovery of this reaction. Over here on the left, we have a conjugated diene. So let me just go ahead and label this as being our diene, which is relatively electron rich. It has a lot of pi electrons. And then over here on the right, this molecule on the right is called our dienophile. File meaning love. So the dienophile loves the diene. And the reason it does so is because the dienophile is relatively electron poor due to the presence of this electron withdrawing group. So we'll get into more details about that in a few minutes. You take those two. Uh, those two those two molecules together, and you heat them up using moderate heat. You're going to get a Diels Alder product, and to get the Diels Alder product, you're going to get a movement of pi electrons. So if I if I think about the mechanism for the Diels Alder reaction, I know that the Diene is relatively electron rich. I know the dienophile is relatively electron poor. So I can think about electrons moving from the diene to the dienophile. And so I can think about these pi electrons right here are going to move from the diene to the dienophile, and they're actually going to form a bond between the two there. So we're going to form a bond right in here. That would mean too many bonds to this carbon right here on my dienophile. So these pi electrons are also going to move at the same time, and those pi electrons are going to move up here to form a bond between those two carbons as well. That would mean too many bonds to this carbon, and so we could think about these electrons in magenta as moving down here to form a double bond. And so these six pi electrons, right? Six pi electrons are moving in this mechanism all at the same time, and they're going to form a, a six-membered ring. And so when I draw my Diels Alder product, I get a six-membered ring. I formed a double bond over here, and my electron withdrawing group is still attached to my ring like that. When I follow my electrons around, right, the electrons, the pi electrons in red formed this single bond. The pi electrons in blue formed this single bond right here, and the pi electrons in magenta formed this double bond. And so forming rings is, is again very useful when you're trying to synthesize complicated organic molecules. And when I think about these these six pi electrons all moving at the same time, we call that a concerted mechanism. And so I can draw the transition state for a concerted mechanism, and I can show all the six pi electrons moving at the same time. So I can take my my carbon skeleton for my diene and my carbon skeleton for my dienophile with the electron withdrawing group attached to it like that, and I can think about the pi electrons in the diene flowing to the dienophile. So I can think about the formation of this bond. And and that happens at the same time that this bond is forming, which happens at the same time that all the electrons in diene are kind of moving at once here. So all these electrons are moving at once, six pi electrons moving at the same time. So I get a concerted six pi electron transition state here. So this is a this is a this is a six pi electron transition state and a concerted mechanism. Six pi electrons turns out to be a magic number in terms of stability when we talk about molecular orbital theory and aromatic compounds. And so you'll see that later, which is one reason that this reaction occurs. And to fully understand a, a Diels Alder reaction, you really need to cover more about a molecular orbital theory. And so we'll do that in future videos. So those six pi electrons all move at the same time to form your to form your six-membered ring over here on the right. This is this is one kind of what we call a cycloaddition reaction. It's called a four plus two cycloaddition. The four comes from the fact that our diene we're working with four carbons here. And the two comes from the fact that our, on our dienophile, we're working with two carbons. So you can see the four plus two right there. Let's do another problem, and this time let's focus in on the electron withdrawing group so we can see why the electron withdrawing group is necessary to get a good yield or a good, a good Diels Alder reaction. So let me go ahead and start with a very simple diene. And let's do a dienophile with an electron withdrawing group right there. And so we're going to put these two together and heat them up. And let's let's think about our dienophile with its electron withdrawing group. So one 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 way to think about it would be to draw resonance structures. So if I go ahead and take my dienophile down here and I think about possible resonance structures that I could draw for that dienophile, one thing I could do is take the pi electrons in the carbonyl and move them out onto the oxygen. Right? So I'm going to take these electrons in here and move those out onto the oxygen. So if I go ahead and draw the resonance structure 
All right, so if I draw the resonance structure now, oxygen has three lone pairs of electrons around it. And we still have our hydrogen over here. So three lone pairs of electrons around oxygen, that gives it a negative one formal charge. And since oxygen is a very electronegative element, right, it can support a negative one formal charge better than some other atoms can. We took a bond away from this carbon, right? So this carbonyl carbon, which is this carbon over here, lost a bond. So it gets a plus one formal charge now. So there's a plus one formal charge on that carbon. I could draw a resonance structure from this one as well, because I recognize the pattern of pi electrons next to a formal charge. These electrons move in here right, to form a double bond. And so now, this resonance structure would still have a negative one formal charge on the oxygen. And this time, I took a bond away from this carbon down here, which is this carbon. So that is where my plus one formal charge is now. So there's a plus one formal charge down here. And I complete my resonance brackets. And I can see that the presence of that electronegative oxygen has taken away some electron density uh, from, from this portion, uh, from, from the alkene portion, from this portion of the molecule. Right? So I give a plus one formal charge in this carbon down here. So when I think about the resonance hybrid, I can think about you know this carbon down here had a plus one formal charge uh, in one of the resonance contributors. So I can think about this carbon down here as being a little bit partially positive. This carbon right here I can think about as being a little bit partially positive since one of the resonance contributors to the hy hybrid had a plus one formal charge. And of course the oxygen being electronegative would be partially negative right here. So the electronegative oxygen is is the reason why it withdraws some electron density from the alkene portion of the molecule, which increases the reactivity of the dienophile. And so because of this, this reasoning, this is just one way to think about it, and this is the way I like to think about it, because it helps me realize why the, the diene is relatively electron rich and the dienophile is relatively electron poor. And therefore, when I think about the mechanism, and I think about these pi electrons here being negatively charged, those pi electrons are going to be uh, attracted to that positively charged, that partially positively charged carbon down here. And so that starts our, our Diels-Alder mechanism. And so then the electrons in here in blue are also going to move out here to form a bond. So I can go ahead and show these electrons in blue moving out to here. And then the electrons in magenta, right? These electrons right in here are going to move down into here like that. And so when I draw my product, I'm going to have a ring here, right? a six-membered ring. I'm going to have a double bond here. I'm still going to have my electron withdrawing group attached to my ring. I'm not concerned about stereochemistry in this video. So right now, we're just focusing on the mechanism. And so that would be my product. Let's follow my electrons. right? So my electrons in red move to here. My electrons in blue moved to here. And my electrons in magenta moved here to form my double bond. So there's my product. Let's do, let's do one more one more example of a Diels-Alder reaction. And uh, this time, let's focus in a little bit more on the diene. So one possibility is to start with your diene in a conformation that looks like this. Okay, that's that's not how we've been drawing our dienes, but this is actually the more stable conformation. And this is called the S trans conformation. So S trans. Normally when we talk about things like cis and trans, we're referring to alkenes. But in this example, we're actually talking about a single bond instead of a double bond. And, and the S here is, is referring to a sigma bond. It's referring to this bond right here. So it's trans relative to that sigma bond. So this is the S trans conformation of my diene. Now, an S trans conformation is not going to react in a Diels-Alder mechanism. And so what has to happen is, since this is a sigma bond, there's free rotation around my sigma bond. I can rotate around the sigma bond and convert the S trans conformation to the S cis conformation, where my, where my two double bonds are on the same side of that sigma bond here. So this is now the S cis conformation, which is the one that I need in order for a Diels-Alder reaction to occur. So this is now my diene. And uh, I can go ahead and come up with a dienophile. This time I'm going to pick an alkyne. So it's possible to have alkynes as dienophiles, since alkynes have pi electrons. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some electron withdrawing groups here on my alkyne. So I'm going to go ahead and put a carbonyl 
right? And then an oxygen and a methyl, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here like that. So it's possible for alkynes to act as dienophiles. And when I take these two reactants and apply moderate heat, I could think about the mechanism, right? So I can think about these pi electrons in here on the S cis conformation of my diene are going to move into here to form a bond. And then I could think about pi electrons in my in my alkyne, right? So those electrons there are going to move into here to form a new bond. And then also, of course, the electrons in magenta here are going to move down to form a double bond here. So when I draw my product, once again, I get a six-membered ring. I form an alkene over here in the left. I took one bond away from my triple bond, so that means I'm going to end up with an alkene on the right here as well. And then I still have, uh, I still have these groups coming off of my ring like that. So that would be my product. Once again, let's follow our electrons. So my electrons in red right, became these electrons, forming a new bond. My electrons in blue became these electrons up here, like that. And then finally, my electrons in magenta formed uh, form this bond right here. So this is an intro to the Diels-Alder reaction. Thinking about the mechanism, thinking about the structure of the diene and the dienophile. Um, next, we're going to, going to get into the stereochemistry of the diene and the dienophile, which, of course, makes things a little bit more difficult.